The plan is, we're gonna put all the internals from the crappy case into the good case. So yeah. Just wanna give everyone a reminder, if you are into retro tech, vintage computers, uh, vintage Apple, granted this isn't exactly vintage, but it will be soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Uh, I am the Canadian Computer Collector, and this is your life. Let's jump right into it. Ladle some syrup into your pockets, because it's time for a Canadian-style voiceover from a cool guy who just got his first set of glasses. So first step on this Mac Pro adventure is to take the tops off and have a look within, and uh, start pulling out whatever comes out. Am I right? Uh, so we started with the CPU tray, and the hard drive trays and the fan. Here we are pulling out the optical drive. Nice yummy piece of lint, just the right size to fit in your mouth. So behind the optical drive is a plate held down by two screws. Make sure you label your screws. <clears throat> Once the plate comes out, we can disconnect power from the logic board and then start removing these things that the CPU tray slides on top of. And this was the first casualty. I got cut on this case twice, actually. Uh, well, thrice, technically. Um, but the other two were off camera, so... I don't have footage of my bleeding foot or other finger for you, unfortunately. So, speaking of unfortunate, these two fans have to move inward for this piece to come out. This housing um, is held in place. You know, the design is wonderful, but it's held in place by those fans. So I had to slip the GPU out disconnect all the cables, try and slide those fans inward, which they really didn't want to do. The one on the left, especially. Um, and then I used a spudger to get in behind and just push it for the final half inch or whatever that I needed to move. Anyway, with all that stuff out of the way, we can pull the PCI cards out. Uh, and another yummy piece of lint. And uh, basically right now we just want to strip away everything that's hanging on to this logic board. So, and I'm saying logic board, pay attention folks, not every motherboard's a motherboard. This is the logic board. So anyway, 10 screws holding it in place and the thing just slides right out basically. Make sure you disconnect all your cables in advance. There's some very thin ones with the Bluetooth and uh, uh, other <laughs> similar ones. <laughs> So anyway, we're halfway through. We've got everything out almost except that power supply which we're taking care of right now. So four screws hold that thing in from the bottom and then it's just kind of an awkward wiggle to get the thing out. And here we are moving on to the front I.O. as well as the power button. And the power button on this machine was a nightmare. Unfortunately, the previous owner had removed the power button from the clean case. So this one had to come over and we'll get to it eventually, but it was terrible. <clears throat> so just a little bit of cleanup on all of the pieces that we pulled out. There wasn't a ton of dust in this thing. I am pissed because I just got that stupid power button out and did not record it. So woohoo! Yeah, so here's footage of me putting it in at least. And look how meticulous this process is. You have to be really careful because the spring piece, as you can see, just flipped out constantly wants to flip out because it's stored energy more or less and every time you press down on it it pushes right back and then wants to shoot the whole thing out so long story short i had to place a metal ringlet around it push it all in with tweezers and fingers you know sadly the footage went by quickly but that's just how it goes logic board goes back in a few screws we don't need to see them all <clears throat> Plug all the cables back into place, plug them into the front I.O., get that Bluetooth back in there, and then these two things, whatever the hell they are. <laughs> uh, I think they're Wi-Fi related. So cards go back in, and take note here, I actually put the cards back in in a different order without realizing it, and that comes in later. Um, but we can now plug the power back in, put the plate over top of the cable, Slide the optical drive back into its place, which I missed the uh, rails a couple times on, but eventually it went right in. Yup. And I forgot to film this part too, so it wasn't just the power button, but putting that housing back in place with those fans. <clears throat> anyway, screws go in, hard drive trays go in, even though there's no hard drives in them. Fan goes back in. This fan didn't have any screws, so I donated two of my own. We can slide in the CPU and RAM, and it's testing time.
Okay, it works. <laughs> Let's see if that fan noise. Oh, what the hell? I don't like that. Okay, problem's been figured out. Okay, so right now this is touching the fans on the GPU. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that. Okay, I think she's spinning freely. Let's try another boot. Ah! Uh -huh. She spins freely! Okay, so that's a wrap on the Mac Pro case transfer. This was New territory for me. I haven't worked on an actual Mac Pro, uh, especially a 5, comma 1. I feel like I learned a lot. Transferring that power button was the most nerve-wracking thing I've done so far. It's a little tiny circle of PCB that's held in place with a ringlet. I can't remember the actual name of the circlet or which I think that's what Amazon's wore in Diablo 2. Thank you once again for joining me. I am and will always be the Canadian computer collector with the dust in my nails and a passion for knowledge. Uh, and again, uh, anyway, thanks again. And uh, without further ado, I will let you get back to your day. Yeah, am I right? The lords and the ladies.